Viewer discretion is advised. is filmed on location with the men and women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. I've been a deputy sheriff for 14 years and I've spent a majority of my time working patrol. Working with a partner, you know how each other will respond to certain things and you do the job more safely because I know he's got my back. I know he's got uh, my best interests in mind. Uh, he wants us to go home safe, and we're, we're on the same page about that. We're going to stop this guy on a bicycle. See why he's uh, riding a bicycle around at night without a headlight on it. Hi there. How are you? You know you have to have a light on your bicycle when you ride at night? Well, I was going to my grandma's house right at the street. How old are you? I'm 20. Do you have any warrants or anything? No. Do you have your ID on you? I don't have my ID because we just was in the process of moving. Okay, do me a favor, stand up. You don't have any weapons or anything on you, do you? <laughs> 17 damn the pupper suit. You better stop. Hit him with it. Where are you at, Corey? Move. You understand? Hands out. Get your hands out. Bring his hand back. We'll have an x ray. We're covering him now. You ain't a dude, man. What? Well, I'm a dude, man. I swear, man. The police be on me. <sighs> All we stopped you for was riding with a light on your bike. He was reaching his waistband. 11 X ray resume. Man, I hate my life. I swear I wish I was dead. Did he get up on the fence? Yeah. I'm gonna take somebody to jail. 11 X ray affirm, he's cuffed. Nobody told you to stand up, but now that you did, let's cross the street. Yeah, I'm a. No, man, it's that's me. Bye, man. Hey, you guys want to? You guys want to max restrain him? Is he gonna be like Come on, that? Man, my arm. Get in, in there. We'll have an X-ray. Could uh, somebody secure our car back there? I came through the garage and uh, I tripped over something and I just ate it. But he had, he had fallen too. It was a gun. It was our gun? He had a gun in his pants. Where's the mag release on this? There's one in the chamber, looks like. 25 hours. Yeah, there is. Is there one in the chamber? Yeah, there's one in the chamber. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's around in the chamber. We gotta clear that. There we go. It's like 25 auto. It's about four rounds in it. Looks like he has a little marijuana and a little rock cocaine. You understand we found the gun in your pants? You found a gun in my pants, but you didn't know I and had some a gun rock. in my pants for protection to keep myself from So you carry killed. it for, for protection? Who's going to try and kill for, you? I don't care. I don't care for protection. I just picked it up off the ground today. How about the Coke? What Coke? The rock cocaine. Rock cocaine? Yeah. Twist it up in that little receipt, the little wrapper. I ain't had no rock cocaine. Y'all must have planted that on me or something. I ain't had no damn rock cocaine. Okay. No, I'm going to let you talk to your grandma here in a second. Are you living with her right now? Where are you living at right now? I'm homeless. You're homeless? Yeah. Okay, well, you understand why we stopped you, right? You can't ride a bicycle at night without a light, okay? I get out, I ask you for your ID, and you take off running. Why'd you run? Because I have my ID. And you feel, I didn't think it was nothing. I should be stopped for it. I had that gun on me for protection. I mean, you took me on a good run here. 
you know. I knows? just I'm just scared because I really just got evicted out of my apartment. Everything it's like a domino effect for me right now. I know y'all don't care how my life is. Y'all gonna do what y'all gotta do, period. But I'm just telling you, my life is like a domino effect right now, and this is the time that it is. This is the era of my life to where everything is going downhill. Right up the street. Yeah, I know. But, but that's, that's not that's, the problem. That's, that's okay, we know that. Yeah. Well, you know why you ran? Because you had co cocaine and all that. Where you get that from? I'm trying yeah. to help so we can live, have somewhere to live. But you know what? Let yeah, me let me talk to him. Yeah. Baby. You know we love you, right? I know y'all love But me. let me tell you something. Everybody has choices in life. And I don't care how bad the situation is, that's not a good choice. I hope you know where that gun came from, and I hope that that gun doesn't have other things on it, no. or you're going to be in serious trouble. You haven't even had a chance to start your life. Do you know that gun charge caught, carries 10 years? Was it loaded? I hope it wasn't loaded, because if it was loaded, that's that's more time on you, darling. What kind of gun was it? They, if they incarcerate you, you're not going to have time. You're not going to be able to live your life. You're going to be institutionalized before when you get out. Just tell my mom I'm sorry if she don't be able to talk to me. Just it's not me. about being sorry, though. No, just tell her I'm sorry, and I, and I don't mean to, I don't want to hurt her. I don't want her to be stressing off nothing I do. But you know what I need you to do, though, right now? And that is cooperate with these guys. Quit being mad at them because it's not their fault. You only it have is one. Their fault no, it's not. They I'll, have one person to blame, and that's you. Can't you. Tell me, you can't tell me these white racist redneck. Excuse me. Kick me all uh -uh. in my face. We don't even go there. You know there. better than that. I go there. Let me tell you something. Look at my face after you touch it. Look at how they kick me in my face after they already had me on the ground. If you was running I'll the police, I'll if you care. was running, I'm what sorry. do you expect for them to I'll do to you? I don't care. The police. I don't give a hell. But you I was know riding okay, on the street without a light. I don't care. Okay, well, we love you and call us, okay? Tell my mom I love her. And okay, love I know we love you, but call us. Racist okay? police. Nah, calm care. down. Let's go. Okay, he's being charged with four felonies. Oh. Okay. And resisting. Oh. So he'll be, um, he'll be incarcerated unless you guys bail him out. He'll be incarcerated for quite a while. Hopefully, this will turn him around. Hopefully, he's got. He's got a good family behind him, but, you know, hopefully he'll make a better decision next time. He seemed to draw a lot of tourists, particularly from European countries. And a lot of times the tourists themselves are amazed that the police in Texas don't ride up on a horse with their cowboy hats and boots on. I guess that's the stereotype that Texas portrays in European countries. You know, in a lot of ways, we are the last cowboys. We, we don't follow a whole lot of structure out here. We go to every kind of call you can imagine. We've been flagged down by a female who's been assaulted and saying that the suspect is across the street at this other store in a silver truck. I have an eight month old and a two month old son and is, an 87 year old grandmother over is there. Is that your, is this your husband or? My boyfriend that's living with me and he's been holding us hostage threatening to kill me in front of my kids. Would you please go get him? Did he drop you off over here? He went to go get cigarettes and me being the smart blonde, I, I jumped out of the truck and ran over here. What's his name? Joshua. What's your name? Christine. I have a loan out. I don't care about good job. I have the money in my purse. I mean, if you want, if I can do a bond in hand, I will. I have an eight-month-old and two-year-old kid. All I'm worried about is that my kids are okay. Let's go to her house. It's just right over here. It's right there. I got. I mean, Did you have an ambulance coming up here? Yeah, I was going to have a I, check on her. Oh, I'm not working. Okay, kids well, ride go. with him. Is it 4016? Go. We got to get over there and check on them kids. That's where we're going. We're going to have the ambulance meet us over there. She tells us that she yeah. has been assaulted and basically held hostage in her home and managed to escape. And that there's a eight month old baby and an 87 year old male still at her house. So we're going to go check on the welfare of them. 10 This will be check up secondary to an assault.
That is so. Y'all cover him and I'll handcuff you, okay? Keep your hands up. Turn around. Get on your knees. What's your name, guy? Joshua. What happened up at the Taylors? Gee, nothing. We went to go get a pack of cigarettes at the Taylors. Who else is in the house? Uh, I heard her great grandma and the kids. Why are her eyes black? Because she started hitting me. Really? Yes, sir. Where are you uh, beat up at? Uh, probably not real bad. But. Okay. She's been wailed on. That's that's strange. Hold on, I'm bring she gets okay. drunk and she starts hitting. Bring Browns. Yeah. She gets drunk and starts hitting you. Yes, sir. I have a witness. She hit me first. Well, your face is not as swollen up as hers is. No, sir, it's not. And why is that? I guess I hit harder. Hit harder and more more times, maybe? No, sir. One for one. I don't believe in hitting women. You just told me you hit her? Yes, sir, I did. But yet, you don't believe in it? No, sir, I don't. That kind of contradictory, isn't it? I understand that. That's why I didn't run. Okay, go ahead and spit your cigarette out and stand up. Well, until we figure out what's going on, we're gonna let you have a seat in the back of this police car, all right? He went inside and I jumped out of the truck and that's when I ran across the street to Tim Tuttle when y'all were there. So he, when he did this to your face, both your kids and your grandma were, were in the room with you when yeah, all this happened. Yeah, they've seen, they've seen, they've seen what's happening, yes. They actually, did your grandmother actually see you getting beat up? Yes, and she's hurting. She's, I mean, it's been, for the past, I'm gonna say about two hours that I've been getting my ass whipped. Okay, so, so what what started the initial fight tonight? What? Him drinking. He don't usually he don't drink at all. I'm not gonna I'm an alcohol I'm an alcoholic so not this. And I'm not gonna I've had a little bit to drink her. I'm not drunk. Like I say he don't drink he is on probation. He is in a lot of trouble already. And um he proceeded with my ass. He told me if I tried to call the cops or if I tried to escape that he would whip my ass. That he'd kill me. All right, let, let them check out your face, okay? Grandma said she didn't see or hear anything. That she He didn't bring her back into the other room and proceed to whoop her in front of everybody. Yeah. yeah. It just happened. She heard them arguing. Well, fine. I mean... I think he needs to go for assault, and if she has a warrant, pick her up when she gets done with her medical issues, you know? Yeah. Joshua, yes, sir. you're under arrest for assault, sir, domestic violence, and serious bodily injury. How long have y'all been? We've dating? known each other for a year and a half now, and we've been dating probably, well, since uh, about three and a half, four months. Is this the first time anything like this has ever happened? No, she gets drunk and she fights. You can ask neighbors around here. That one, the one across the street, is her ex-boyfriend's boss. She beat the <laughs> out of him. Well, it's a little that. more than fighting tonight, man. I mean, it her is. face is swollen up. This is the first time I've ever hit her. I swear to God. She's pretty messed up. Yeah. Go ahead and have a seat and he's got to get some questions from you and we'll be back here in a second, man. The female half in this deal, she's going out to the hospital, and the male half, he's been arrested for assault with serious bodily injury, and then we're going to meet up with her out at the hospital to get an affidavit from her. I've been with the Pierce County Sheriff's Department since about August of 2000. Worked uh, Lakewood for a little while, and then uh, moved over to the east side of Pierce County. It's a fun job. It's really enjoyable. You meet a lot of different people, and well, let's see what we got going on right here. Uh, we're gonna come around and see what this guy has to say. 442 County. It looks like I'm getting waved down the white male, blue over blue. Woo! That was crazy. So what's going on? Some uh, guy just came out of the apartment right here, uh, the final one up from up top, and came and started running, chasing me with a knife. He pulled it out and started running, 
could have got me a little okay. nervous in running back. What did he look like? Uh, he was uh, about my height, probably a little bit lighter, uh, white guy, um, shorts. He's either late 30s, mid 40s, and uh, I look up and he's that guy sitting on the top of the stairs. He yells, he goes, what are you looking at, you privacy rapist? And I, just, so I said, yeah, kept walking. He goes, you think that's funny? And then he ran down the stairs, and I'm probably right here in the street, and he's right behind, right by that curb right there. And at first I'm like, okay, I hope I don't want to get in a fight. But, and then all of a sudden I saw the knife, and then he popped it open, so it like one of those times. So he made a physical movement. Oh, he open. opened up and he actually ran after me. He chased okay. me. Chased me to the corner. What color was the knife? Silver. Like, like silver. So from my eyes, all I saw was, I don't know if I remember seeing that. I don't remember seeing any different color, but just silver. So it Are you 100% awesome. positive it was a knife? Oh, I know it's a knife because he had to flip it open. So you saw him physically open yep. the knife? Okay. If you'll hang out next to my partner's car, I'll get you a statement. I should be out that guy, Sheriff Department, open the door. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Turn around, face away from me. Put your hands on top of your head. Top of your head. Face away. Relax. Okay. Where are you going? We've got one thing. Am I going to jail? I don't know. We're going to go talk about it. Okay. But we're going to go outside and make sure you're who we think you are. Why would you be going to jail? I don't know. Because I had an anger outburst. Because you had an anger outburst? Because I don't get along with that neighbor and you provoke me and I chased off the room. Okay. But What'd I, you do with the knife? I didn't have a knife. Okay. Do you say I had a knife? Well, let's go oh, down here. We'll talk. Have a seat right there. I was up there having a cigarette. I asked him what he was looking at. And uh, he said some remark and he and he started laughing. And I walked I walked I walked I walked over there and he started running from me, so I ran after him and then he called you guys. Okay, why would he call us? I have no idea. He's bigger than I am. Did you have anything in your hands? My keys. These are all you had in your hand? Yep. He got my goat with what he did. How did he do that? Just by laughing at me and seeing something under his breath. So how would he mistake these for a knife? I have no idea. He said he saw a blade. Uh, I have no idea what he's talking about. There's intimidation with the weapon and then there's felony harassment. Felony harassment? Or intimidation with a weapon. Wow. Yeah. When he walked by and he looked up here, what'd you say to him that made him laugh? Um, I said, you're, you're a privacy rapist. You're a privacy rapist? Privacy rapist, because um, he had me believing that he could see into my house. Today, as he walked by, how he, was, how he was staring at me and stuff, I felt provoked. So I wanted to go over there and talk to him. So why don't you tell me the rest of the truth about where the knife is? And then we're done. It's, uh, it's packed away in boxes. Which box? It is in my, the bedroom where the boxes are in. Can you show me? Yeah. Let's walk upstairs and you can show me. Ooh. I won't let you fall. I had my keys in my hand, is what he's saying, is the knife was keys. I don't want to dig through all your stuff. So it's just easier if you tell me which box did you put it in? Did you drop it in this box? Is that it? That's, yeah, that's my knife right there. Okay. But I didn't care right after him with it. Okay. Let's go this way. Would you like to have an opportunity to say your side of the story and what happened? I don't even want to talk to this dude. Thanks for making me lose my home. Hey, rapist. Hey, hey, you privacy hey, rapist. Hey, hey, die. Do me a favor. Go over to the front of my patrol car. Privacy car. rapist. Calm down. I'm going to be in jail for a minute. Nobody's going to pay my rent for me. Chances are good you'll see a judge either tomorrow or Monday. 
okay. when you explain your case to him, maybe he'll be able to assist you in a way of making sure your rent gets paid. Okay? Please don't take me to jail. Please. Sir, you're going to jail. Okay? Watch it. So I didn't have a seat. Watch your head. I, I know I lost my home. Goodbye, Batos. Let's go down the other side. What do you remember about the knife? Anything distinct or distinguishing? Yeah, I remember it was one of the kind you have to push with the button and pull out, and I remember it being silver. Okay, would that be it? Exactly, that's the one. Okay, thank you, sir. Yep. Hey, so you know, that guy told me the knife I showed him was exactly the knife. Are you saying it's not? No, I don't think it, I didn't chase after him with the knife. You didn't chase after him with the knife? No. So why does he say that's exactly the knife you used? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, sir, you're going to go to jail for felony harassment and intimidation with a weapon. 132 in Bush. I've got him at gunpoint. Okay, gunpoint. 132 in Bush. Covers code 3. Thanks, Ted. Get it to 2514. Ted's transmit on track 2. Give me that voice. What you want? What you want? What you want? What you want? Cops is filmed on location with the men and women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. I'm originally from Tennessee, went in the Army for a few years, come out, went to work there as a police officer. Came down here to South Florida and it's really no different, you know, police work's police work, crime's the same, you know. A few of the state laws are different, but other than that, people are people. Hopefully you can just be a small part of that and make some difference in uh, somebody's life. We're heading to an armed robbery. One of our uh, local sandwich shops down the street here. Uh, the owner was taken out of the trash and uh, just got held up at gunpoint. Uh, Try to get down here and see what's going on. Set a perimeter and see if we can catch these guys. Hello, school. Hey, tell us now. Black male running southbound. Right here. We're right here. Possible suspect. Black shirt, khaki shorts. We got the dog! Hey, just sitting at 14, Murphy. That's a dead end in there. It's a little swap in there. Yeah, 10 4. They're either going to pop, pop right out by the clubhouse or they're going to have to go all the way south through the, the lake. The guys that are off by the entrance, uh, once the elevator gets there, you can actually move the perimeter uh, west towards that one road that goes north to south and south to south. Hands! 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 Yeah, boy! Hands! Hands! Stop resisting! All right, all right, all right. You got cuffs? You got cuffs, Del Rey? No, no. All right, put you. Hey, got him, got him. Got him. Where the rest at? Where the rest at? Where's the other guy? Hey, hey, hey. Clear him. Clear him from here now. Search him real quick. Clear him out. Get him out of the scene now. Clear him from here now. Go ahead and guy, one point and guy, go with him, please, and get him to one. Oh, one more in you? That's one of them. Is there one in here? I don't, that was him. That was one. Police K9, 
Yeah, that's him. No, that's the one that ran for me. What's he saying? What's up, man? You okay? Up, you hurt? Man. Yeah, I'm hurt. Where you hurt at? I'm hurt from running after you, too. Why'd what? you run? Because I see the other dude uh, uh, ran, cause, so so I, I didn't want y'all to think like I was with him. That, that, that's why I ran. By the way, uh, with a white shirt, was uh, by the pool, too. So, okay. so I see the car behind me, so I saw him running. So they might think that I'm with him or something. But I was with nobody because my friend used to live out there. That, I'm here every day. Okay. Well, you know, you see yeah, the cops, no they'll stop. But you, you ran around the pool and took off and then hid in the bushes on me. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're gonna get this sorted out. Where'd your other buddy go? Where did your buddy go that was running with you? Damn, Where's he my live? Buddy, I don't know them. He sure was running with you. Okay. He wasn't running with me. All right. We'll get your parents over here in a little bit. Have a seat in the car. Yeah, bro. What happened was the kid said he went right out back, opened the door to take the trash out, and the guy just ripped the door open and put the gun to his head. That's what oh, wow, to his head. This is the guy robbing him. You apprehended. He had the gun? Is that the one with the gun? I'm not sure which one had the gun. I think this is the guy with the sledgehammer because they said they opened the safe with the sledgehammer. And then when I came back south, where were you doing all this? I was not here. You weren't even here? I live right down the street. Oh, wow. So they're just closing up. Yep. Okay. Just closed. 9 o'clock. This is about 8 minutes fast. So it was like 9.02 when this all happened. It's probably like 1100 bucks. We left a $1,400 deposit from yesterday sitting in there. 1400 bucks in cash, and he takes probably 300 in tips. Well, you know, they're in a hurry, you know. They're... Yeah, but I mean, he took the bag that looked like a sandwich and left the deposit bank bag. <laughs> And this is right when he leaves. Yeah. As soon yeah. as he picks up the phone, that's when they're they run the out the door. back door. Yep. They did the right thing. Yeah. They did the right thing. Absolutely. I just talked to Tech Marino and the kid that we apprehended there at the scene. He's admitted his part in the robbery, giving up his buddies, so hopefully we'll be able to close this out. Are you okay? He looks a little shaken up, man. A little shaken up. What happened? Tell us what uh, happened. Bill went, opened the back door, take the trash out. The guy opened the door, stuck a gun in and called to his buddies, come on, come on. They came in the store, the one guy had a gun, the other hammer. He had a hammer in his hand? Yeah, he had a hammer in his waistband. And he pulled it out as he walked up. The other guy had a bat. And we're standing back there, our hands up. They walk us to the front. We open the register, give them the money. They go to the safe, take the money out of the safe. And they're gone. Did you get hit or anything, man? Didn't get touched. It's good, man. Did the right thing, you know. Always give him that money and let him get out of here. All right, good job, man. Thanks. Myself and Officer Robertson's primary objective is to help with the call load that involves uh, the mentally ill and or uh, suicidal. We received special training on how to, how to deal with those folks and how to show a positive uh, view of the police department rather than just be known as taking people to jail. Uh, we're going to one of our local parks. There's apparently a subject harassing females in the park. Hello, are you Claudia? Yes. What's going on? Well, I was uh, on the park walking and then I sit down for a moment to rest and my husband was on, on the playground with my son and this guy come and start sexual harassing me and telling me if I like oral, oral sex and come with him to the restroom. And I told him that my husband was here on the park and he was not going to appreciate that. Where did, where'd he go? Uh, he was walking that way and uh, my husband followed him and I told him to don't do nothing to him. I bet that was him running. Yeah. And the guy doesn't have a shirt. Does he your has... husband kind of have longer hair? Yes. Okay. That was glasses? Yes. Okay. We f we're going to go find them. They're down there. Okay. Thank you. They still be tired by the time we catch up to them. Yeah. See, I thought that guy was pointing when we drove by. But he could have yelled or something. Tax 6 we're going to be out with the complainant's husband and the suspect in the Discovery Center parking lot. What's going on? I just saw this girl and 
asked if she liked oral sex. And so you did? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then she said her husband coming. I said, well, okay, that took off. And I've been coming out here for 19 years. I haven't gotten no trouble. Okay. Go ahead and turn around and put your hands behind your back. Detaining you until I figure out what's going on. Okay. What What makes you think you can go up and just say lewd things to people? I I don't have no idea, man. I just messed up tonight. Okay. Come back here and have a seat in the car. Okay. I'm touching that stuff. I suppose you don't have your ID or anything on you since you're it's in, in my, It's in the car. Okay. Let me get your name and everything from you. Can I help you? It's my husband. Okay. Well, I'll tell you in a minute. If you'll just go, are you going to be in a car or something or over, no, here? over here? I need to talk to him for a minute. He straight up admitted it to me. I said, what's going on? Well, I went over to that lady and asked her if she liked oral sex. You're kind of upset. I can understand seeing your husband put in the back of a car. I'll just start at the beginning. We got a call out here from a lady saying that a man approached her, matching your husband's description, and asked her if she'd like to go in the bathroom and have oral sex. And then this other gentleman is the female's husband, and he was chasing your husband. When I got out of the car, I simply asked him, hey, what's going on? And he said to me, well, I'm sorry, I went over there and asked that lady if she wanted oral sex. So I don't, I don't know how to put it any, any plainer, any gentler than that. So what's going to be going on? Uh, I believe it's going to be lewd conduct. He's, he's broken the law. If you want to wait there, I'll, I'll let you know what's going to happen. Okay? Okay. Yeah, so you want to go and come to the restroom with me? We can do something there. I mean... And I said, you know, my husband is here on the park, too, and he's not going to appreciate what you're telling me. She was pointing at him and pointing at him. And I got up to him, and I said, hey, man, what, what the hell's wrong with you, man? That's my wife, and mm -hmm. you're, you're asking women that. You know, I said, you, I can't believe I'm not pounding your face right now, man. Somebody's going to find you in the lake. You don't, you don't, did you not see the wedding ring on her hand? Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm kind of messed up on, on medication right now. I said, you're fixing to be a whole lot more messed up, dude. And he, he stopped and kind of went like this. I said, so you, you want a party now, huh? I said, it's, it's not going to be pretty, man. Mm -hmm. He said, well, you know, I can't we just forget about this? I said, I'm sorry, my wife already called the police, so. Yeah. You can either tell them, and he goes, well, my wife's right over here. I said, well, that's good. You need to tell her before the cops get here. Mm -hmm. I said, you can either tell them standing up, or you can tell them on the way to the hospital a bit. Tell me again, what, what's, what was going on out here, Stephen? I was just doing my regular three laps that I do every day. And uh, I passed this lady and spoke to her. She's nice looking. And I saw her sitting by herself. And I thought, well, why don't she be interested in having oral sex? So I asked her. She said, my husband is walking. And she said, you better keep on going. And I did. I didn't say anything more. OK. And uh, I know I made a mistake. And uh, I love my wife. And I don't know if I'd have went through with it or not. OK. Well, but I, I was advised figuring she probably would say no so well what were you thinking if your wife's on one side of the park and you're on the other side of the park the thing was i wasn't thinking do you make a habit of this no sir what's your wife gonna say oh she loves me she won't say too much but she should kill me you don't think she's gonna be mad she'd be a little upset but she loves me and she'll you know love overcomes everything okay we're just going to make a report on this whole incident and turn it into detectives. I'm sorry for the problems that I caused her. And, you okay. Know. All right, hang tight. We'll be right back. Okay. Nobody wants to come to the park and have somebody proposition right. them for right. sex. You know what I mean? And that man was very, very restrained because he, he wanted to uh, inflict some pain upon your husband, and I'm glad he didn't because that would have put him in trouble. But he may need to see a counselor or may need to see somebody that he can work these issues out with to, you know, not not be demonstrating that behavior to the public. Okay? Well, okay. we're going to go ahead and release him to you now, and, and uh, he's he's free to go, so if he wants to drive, that's fine. Okay? Okay, thank okay. you all. I just want to let you know that... Um, 
a lot more could come of this. You know what I'm saying? If a detective deems that there's enough evidence to press charges on you, whatever those may be, uh, those may be coming later. But as of today, we don't have enough to put you in jail. Okay. If you want to go ahead and turn around, I'll get you out of those cases. Hey, I wouldn't mind that bit. Okay. I started getting involved in law enforcement. I've always uh, enjoyed helping people out, being outdoors, being active. This job uh, definitely accomplishes both of that. I like uh, having the satisfaction. I go home at night and uh, I can sleep well. I'm not that I've done a good job to help out the area where I live and the community that I, I protect. Uh, we're going to stop and talk to this guy. I'm not quite sure what he's doing, but I think he's uh, having a hard time with something here. That front tire's just a little low on air. It's going to blow it up. And then the, uh, the brakes on the back are, are broken. Maybe we can pull it like around the corner a little bit? Yeah, I was trying to find my cousin's house on 87. Is he uh, joking with me? Affirmative. Let's walk up here. This is your truck? This is my truck. What's your name? <clears throat> my name's Tyler. What's up with the sleeping bag, man? Oh, there's a tent. I was down at the world's longest beach this morning. Where's that at? Long Beach. Oh, yeah? I think I'm going to buy the lighthouse up there. You're going to buy the lighthouse up there? Yeah. You been drinking it all tonight? Yeah, I just cracked one right there. That's it. You get your ID on you? Yeah, of course I do. I see it. <laughs> Which one? How about your license? <clears throat> all right. From no, I, I grew up in Hermiston, Oregon. Really? Why don't you uh, sit tight for a second? All right. How about we... Uh, he means sit tight outside the car. I'm sure oh, right. Let's go by the back bumper real quick. Fine. That'd be fantastic. You got any weapons on you or anything? Guns? No. I'm going to patch you down real fast. You, you <laughs> got some right. bullets and stuff inside. Make sure no. you got nothing crazy on you. There you go. You got any oh. guns in the car? <clears throat> Don't arrest me. You know, we, we got a gun safe at the farm. That's just yeah. about it. All right, that's a good place for it. All right, put your hands down for me. Go ahead and have a seat on the little bumper right here. Explain to me, I kind of missed the start of this. Explain to me what's going on. Well, you're, you're parked here because? You know, we had a family vacation uh -huh. at the world's longest beach. Now I'm driving home to Grandma Betty's house. Did you get off the freeway somehow? <clears throat> I'm not too sure, man. I've been lost in Portland for quite a while. Okay. How much did you had a drink today? <clears throat> My bad. What's that? Not even half of water. All right. Is that sarcasm or not? I have a hard time checking sarcasm oh, sometimes. Man. So, how much alcohol have you had to drink today? Just a sip. What's a sip? <clears throat> oh, it's a little bit off the top of a can. It's a red beer. So you took the freeway, looking for Hermiston. You're, uh, and you drove all the way here from where? <clears throat> the world's uh, longest beach. Which is where? Uh, <clears throat> is it anywhere next? Ju just north of the port of El Waco. Of course. All right. There you're up. So, so what's your master plan here? Yellow, Adam, <laughs> I'm trying to get home, no. <clears throat> Grandma Betty is doing real good. Grandma Betty, huh? We just came around the corner, and this guy is parked in the middle of a very busy street in North Portland. He says he's uh, trying to put air in his tire. He says he's trying to put water in his car. Uh, he's intoxicated. He said he's trying to get to Hermiston, which is several hours east of here. He's not quite sure where he came from. Um, if he was actually driving this car, he would be under arrest for de driving under the influence, obviously. You're putting oil in a car here in the middle of this oil little thoroughfare? And you're pumping up your tire? You gotta keep on trucking. You yeah, might take some tests for us? I don't do very good with the tests. Why is that? I don't know, I'm a pretty straightforward guy. Are you? So are you drunk then? Not a bit. What's that? <clears throat> no, sir. Not a bit? You, you want to talk to Staff Sergeant? Who's Staff Sergeant? Staff Sergeant DeLeo. He just got promoted. Are you in the military? No, yeah. are doing the officer deal. All right. You got any kind of medication at all? No, sir. Are you supposed to be taking any kind of medication at all? No, sir. 
no like allergies, nothing like that, or <clears throat> no, sir. Okay. See a doctor? <clears throat> yeah, I live with a doctor. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Mom, dad, <clears throat> friend? Just my roommate. Roommate? What kind of doctor is he? <clears throat> He's a chiropractor. Chiropractor? Okay. Well, I think you probably had too much to uh, to drink tonight to be driving. Yeah, that's. So right, we're right. we're gonna uh, take you to detox. It's a place you can sober up. It's not under arrest. It's a place to detain you. Right. Okay. And then we'll figure out something to do with your truck. All right. Okay. So we, <clears throat> we gotta put you in handcuffs for that. All right. If you were driving, you'd be under arrest because this is pretty stupid on your part to be out here. We're gonna make it on, you know. Huh? <clears throat> you think you can give my cousin a call? All well, that tomato juice you're wasting. It's more the Bud Light inside of it that we're concerned about. Well, and Bev took over Bud Light, right? Did they? Well, that's what I heard in college. I, I go to Oregon State University. Do you? How old are you? How old do you think I look? How old uh, do I think you look, or how old are you? 23. That's a damn good guess. You must have looked at my ID. I did, man. So what are you studying? I was trying to find something I liked better than farming, but it ain't yeah. working, so. Right, put you back on there real quick. <clears throat> how are you doing, sir? Good, how are you? All right, Good, so all right. go ahead and have a seat, my friend. <clears throat> there's not much of a back seat in this. No, there's not. I mean, not, not quite as much room as that Ford up there. No. <clears throat> Get there okay? Yeah. Watch your head. Of course. Watch uh, this bump. I'm getting, getting old. 23. <clears throat> Downward slide. Click it or tick it. There you go. It's a good policy. 132 in Bush. I've got him at gunpoint. Okay, gunpoint. 132 in Bush. Covers code 3. Thanks, Ted. Get it 2514. Can't transmit on tech. Say hello to the good guys. Kicking back. Viewer discretion is advised. is filmed on location with the men and women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. What drew me to crew was uh, I worked night shift out here for about three years in East Precinct and I saw what these guys were doing, the impact that they were making on the street, and their uh, drug seizures and gun seizures and uh, I just wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to come out here, work hard, make a difference and uh, be a part of a a really good team of guys. We've set up a buy utilizing a confidential informant up the road here. The uh, subject that's supposed to be delivering the narcotics is supposed to be coming heavy, which means having more narcotics than we've ordered. And we're hoping, you know, you've heard of a baker's dozen that's 13, a dozen's 12, but we're thinking maybe somewhere along the lines of a tweaker's dozen where somebody actually stole one of them. So hopefully we get around 11 ounces. Hey, Tony, I didn't see one of them turquoise. I saw kind of a darker colored one, uh, like a Ford Escort style. Anything on uh, him pulling out? We're going to get a failure to 100 Perfect, feet. Tony, I had to move to Perfect. Catch up to him. We got it. We got the PC now. Yeah, cars right behind. Okay, this is the car. Uh, we have PC to stop the car now. It looks like it's one male occupant, driver. Okay, and we're going to conduct a traffic uh, stop on him. Yep, that'd be great. We're doing the T-stop now. 2970 traffic. We are at Powell, Oregon, Charles Victor George. Hey, how are you? Hey, you want to shut your car off for me? No, do speak English. No. Do speak English? No. You shut the car off? Gracias. You have a driver's license? Yes. And insurance? Yes. Can I see it, please? Wow. Oh, I smell it. Hmm. Smell it strong. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pull it. The problem? That's that's enough. If he's going to play that, let's just get him out. Okay, I smell it. Can you step out of the car for me? Yes. 
Yeah, it's powerful. Manos. Manos. Yep. Manos. It doesn't look a base up. Did you smell that? Go smell it. It smells strong. Right there, buddy. Okay. Amigo, it's your, your car. What? It smells like coca. No. Yes, it's. Ooh. Uh, me permite revisar Bad. to uh, Caro por drogas okay. y armas? No. No? No? No, English? No. Algum problem? Come here. Okay. Hey. Sorry about that. We have the uh, canine coming now. When they open the car, it smells of cocaine. So there's obviously cocaine in there. Uh, we'll have the dog. Here he comes now. We'll do a uh, search with him and then see what's in there. We're taking a quick look just to make sure there's nothing in here that's going to hurt the dog. Any needles or any open knives or some uh, maybe a gun or something that he could trigger off. Or, but the the smell in here of cocaine is just overwhelming. So either there's going to be more than a couple ounces or he had it out when he was at the uh, original meat location and it kind of just saturated the air. The canine's working his dog around the car. He's looking for small indicators from his dog, just slight movements that through his training with his dog, he knows that the dog is indicating on an odor. Um, we may not see it, but he obviously would know from you know, all the hours he trains with his dog. So the dog's given uh, an alert on the center console. The center console there? Yep. And uh, looks like, uh, good boy. Okay. Yeah, you get a, an indication there. He's a passive alert, so he's sitting, which uh, he's, saying he's indicating to the, uh, the center console, so. Okay. Okay, hey. Okay, hang on. Hey. Whoa, there it is, money shot. And it's a lot more than an ounce. That's why it's so strong. It is just absolutely wrapped. There's cocaine all under that center console. Okay, take a shot. All right, and I'm gonna get the money in the glove box. Hey, Jeremy. Oh, that's, those are huge rocks. These are powder, packs of powder cocaine. They're pretty heavy because they're packed pretty tight. The one of crack we pulled out first was about an ounce. It's completely stuffed up in here. This is probably about a quarter of crack. Here's uh, some more crack. That's about an ounce of crack cocaine. I thought that this guy would come heavy because the uh, informant sounded very uh, reliable. But um, I'm surprised to find so much crack. I bet you will have probably three to four ounces of crack. And as you look deeper into this console, it's still pretty packed full. This is a, this is a pretty decent little seizure for our crime reduction unit. I bet when we're done, we probably will have at least a quarter pound of cocaine, maybe a little bit more. But the uh, amount of crack is uh, what will really get you as far as your uh, sentencing, especially in federal prison. Hold this right here, Jeremy. Can you hold that? Yep. There's one right there. I mean, there's yeah, it's, cocaine it's hidden all around. This guy is running around doing deliveries. He's receiving calls from whoever's running him. There's another big bag. Um, and he just goes to wherever he's instructed to drop off whatever mount he's instructed to drop off. That one deck should come out. I mean, it's just, this is, whole center console is just packed full. And there's more. Well, we weighed it all out. And each one of these is an ounce, not a half ounce. So total, we've got seven ounces of crack cocaine. And we've got a tweaker's dozen of powder. 11 ounces of tweaker's dozen oh, powder man. cocaine. You called it, man. Yeah. Way to go. Tweaker's dozen. All right. So I've got a tow on the way to take this to Seizure World. Okay. And then we'll take all of this back to East and process it. Perfect. Yeah. Sounds Finish good. Finish the paperwork and then we'll come out tomorrow night and do it again. Great job, guys. I've been a police officer for about six years now. And what I like most about being a police officer is we go on a lot of calls out here, especially uh, in an inner city environment that 
involve a lot of quick decision making and a lot of excitement when you first get there. And, uh, I enjoy the process of getting it all, you know, lined up and uh, settled down and starting the wheels in motion that a lot of times lead to uh, you know, big prosecutions. Well, we got dispatched to uh, an alley up here where a Hispanic male was supposedly shooting rounds off from an unknown type handgun. 22, 28 to the green. 310 to 313. Did you call us? He just took off up the alley. Running up the alley? Yeah. And he has a, a kind of bluish hat on with a gray uh, coat, heavy coat. Young or old? He's young. Okay. He's on foot? He just went up that, yeah. He okay. just went up that way. Where? He's on the left side before that truck's getting ready to hop out. Tall. He's got a blue hat on right here. On it's right here, right there. Left hand. Left hand. Let me see your hands now. On the ground. On the ground. Get down. Get down. Right there. Right I there. See it, right I see it. I see it. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Get him in cuss. Yes sir. Thompson, Benson. And is this gonna be in regards to all that call? Yeah, it's going to be a legitimate gun. Hey, Stump. He's got his weed right here, too. Well, it looks like we've got some kind of uh, 9mm Luger is what it looks like, semi-auto handgun. He had that in his left hand when we were rolling up here. Uh, when we started hollering at him, he started uh, making a throwing motion with his left hand. We saw that thing go flying into the uh, rock area right there. How old are you? 15 23. Right hand, yeah. 23. You ever been arrested in Kansas City 23. before? Yes, sir. Where'd you get the gun? Uh, right there, some black dude gave it to me. Some black guy gave it to you? Yeah. He just gave it to you? I bought it for 20 bucks. You bought it for 20 bucks? Okay. How long ago? Like 10 minutes, 5 minutes ago. Right there minutes in the corner. Can you shoot it? Huh? You shoot it? No. Like you haven't shot it? I bought it right there in the corner. Okay, but you haven't ever, you've never shot it? No. Okay. So you don't you don't even know if it works then do you? Huh? You don't even know if it works. Does it work? I don't know. You don't know? Have no clue. No. Okay. Go ahead. It's a good thing you put it down, man. Real good thing. I'm telling you already by right there in the corner. You know him? Huh? You know this guy? No, sir. No? No. He just he just saw you on the street and what? I mean, tell me tell me how it happened. Just I walked in to my house right there, right there, and he tell me walk in the corner and I said to you, and I walk in the corner and he gave it to me and just just walk. So you guys met down there. Yeah. You're saying you met down there, and you've never seen him before. Not really. Not really. What was he wearing? What? What kind of clothes was he wearing? Ah, uh, black shirt and blue jeans. Black shirt and blue jeans? Yeah. He's saying he just bought it. Okay. From a, from a black guy right down the road here. Said he bought it for 20 bucks. Why don't you, why don't you explain this to me, okay? okay? Why are we getting sent up here on a shots fired in this alley with a Hispanic guy wearing a gray jacket and a blue hat? That's exactly what you're wearing. That's exactly what you are. Yeah, uh, I already buy right here on the corner. No, 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 You were shooting it. Not that you're standing back here, but you're back here in the alley firing it off, and there's no rounds left in it, so they've all been fired out of it. I mean, we're here for a reason, because we told that you were back here firing the gun, wearing your gray sweater and your uh, blue hat. Here's what, here's what, what we're going to do. Come out of earshot. I don't, yeah, I don't want to go too far from now. No, no. Since when we pulled it off of him, he'd already fired out all the rounds. We don't have him for uh, CCW, since it's not readily... No capable yeah. lethal force and all that stuff. As far as FIP goes, he's got a couple of arrests, but you know, pled down to misdemeanors and SIS and stuff like that. So really, all we have here is a discharge of firearm over here in the alley, which we're going to have to subpoena her to come to court to testify to, since she saw that. So we need to have her identify him here at the scene in a as sneaky of a way as possible. So I figure what we'll do is we'll shine our flash, our uh, spotlight on the car right at his face and have you talking to him, keeping his eyes this way. I'll slip her up here to lead him to the fence and she can have a look at it, okay? Okay. But just make sure he doesn't look over that direction. All right. I'm gonna, hey, turn the light on, stand him back here so we can shine the light this way. 
because he's going to be looking that way. Right. So. Yeah. In fact. Uh, Yo, Berto. Yes, sir. Parate. So you can see him and he can't see yeah, you. That's yeah. That's going to be him. Yeah, that's him. A positive ID. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't you come on here on the other side of the truck? Here's what we're going to do. Like I was telling you earlier, we're going to go ahead and take him to city court or city jail on that uh, discharge uh, charge in the city limits, okay? okay? Since you're the one that saw it, we have to have you sign for it. Okay. I mean, if I saw it, then it wouldn't be necessary, but since, since it's you, you have to do that. You identified him, it'll just be a simple deal coming down to city court and saying, yeah, that's a guy shooting, shooting rounds off in the alley, okay? okay. So if you want to bear with us for just a little bit, you maybe uh, we can have you sit down in our other officer's other car okay. and you can sit here and... Uh, okay. 339A. Did you uh, see what was in that cup? Another pipe. Yeah. 58, 58. Here's what we're going to do with you, bud. I don't think there's any question that you're shooting that gun off here in the alley, okay? We're going to charge you with that, and we're going to charge in city court with it. We've got people out here that saw you do that, so nothing you say is going to convince me otherwise, okay? That's number one. Number two, you've got the pipes, you got the weed, and we'll catch case on those two as well, okay? They're all city cases, okay? There's consequences to what you do out here. When you do stupid stuff, bad things happen. So stop it. Just getting back after a long weekend and did some things with the family, played a little soccer. Just enjoyed Vegas like a tourist for a change instead of like somebody who's got to make sure everybody else is safe. Right now we're heading over to uh, back another officer, a motor officer. He was riding down the street and he got hailed by somebody and then three other people just walked up on him yelling. He says not at him, but they're still upset with each other. Apparently, they were in a fight. What's up, John? What's the story? This guy's telling me that he attacked him, and as I'm standing here getting a story from him, this guy comes running up and says that those three jumped him and just beat him up and hurt him. Show him your eye. He jumped me, man. The okay. Do you, open the door. Do you want medical to look at it? Yes, I cut. He scratched my eyeballs out right here. Okay. Control let me see. Let me see right. And, and that that didn't happen today. No, I, that's that's the spider wound right there. I had a brown calouse bit me. A brown calouse? Yeah. Answer your phone. Oh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. They they them around here. The the the, 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 the Relax, the, man. The mother could have killed me in that man. You know, I'm already weak. Want to sit down? I'm already What did they attack you with? Me. They bum rushed me, man. They, just they all hit you with anything? Okay, there, there was some I type of so. argument over this bed, apparently, all right? Hey, Greg, yeah, hold you on. Know, oh, you know, He's you saying know, he's getting the owner oh, of the, the bed on the, you know, on the phone, and, right? and they're going to discuss a... Uh, they, they, they had some argument in the past about it, and they told him, we're coming to get the bed, and we're going to come beat you up if we don't get it back. Looks like these three guys over here are probably going to be our suspects. Do you need an ambulance, though? Do me a favor. Put your hands behind your back. Put your palms together. Is that forward one? Yes, sir. Stop talking and sit down. Right over here. Thank you. Move over there. Sir, move over there, right there. Right. Wait for him to help you. I don't want you falling over and hurting yourself. Go ahead, have a seat. Got me? Okay, uh, uh, listen, uh, we'll call you back if we've got any more questions, all right? All right, thanks. Bro. Okay, yeah. I got some story here. This was the brother that he's talking about. He's saying that the bed was his brother's. Well, this is the brother. And he told his brother that's sitting over there, don't go over there, don't mess with him. It's his bed. Leave him alone. The guy's on steroids. Who knows what's going to happen if you go over there and try to claim the bed. So leave him alone. It's his bed. Over a bed. Yeah. You all understand your rights, right? All right. Whose who's brother used to lease the apartment? My brother. Used to lease the apartment? Leases it currently. Gregory. Okay. Because I've already spoken to him. Okay. Now, he told me that he told you to leave him alone, that the bed belongs to that gentleman, and not to go over there. No, sir. He, he just me. told me that. He traded me a gang box of tools. I had two gang boxes. He needed one for his truck, for the bed. I called Tony. I said, can I come get the bed? He said, yes. He said, Greg didn't say nothing, but he goes, I don't need it. I don't want it. Friendly, no problem. I came over, and he goes, you know what? He's trying to get me on the red. Just get, just get the f out of here and attack me in the doorway. He pulled me in and said, start beating me. 
and they pulled him off. And I said, I don't want no trouble. He chased us clear to the parking lot. I called 911 and he told somebody, get over here and bring a gun. And so I, I just called the police and flagged the motorcycle police. I don't have a gun, I want to fight him. Sir, can you come over here and talk to me for a minute? Okay, what's uh, his brother's we'll tell you the whole relationship? Story, the whole truth, not about truth. We that would be there. refreshing. Sure. We three went up there. I went up there, no bad intentions, either did he. Okay. He said, hey, I come to get this bed. Okay. You know, Tony goes, you ain't getting a thing, and got right in his face, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. And I kind of took a step back, and two seconds later, Tony grabbed, pulled him in, and started, they started going at it, banging. I went in, we both, me and the other guy grabbed him and held him down. And I said, Tony, stop, dude. Okay. So we let him up, they stopped. Tony started crying about his eye. And I was like, dude, you, you attacked him first, man. You brought it on, you grabbed him. It's okay. your fault, much as his. I said, we're brother iron workers. We come here to move a bed. This is blah, blah, blah. And Tony goes, I'll, I'll you up on one-on-one. -on -one. And I said, hey, whatever. And they went one-on-one -on -one for about five, 10 minutes. That's why they all tore up. Tony got him down. Mike said, okay, you got me. You beat me. And that was it. Okay, just have a seat. You're not going to jail, but we're, until okay, we right. get to okay. settle it. Hey, hey, Tony. Based on our investigation, you started the fight. Okay. You lost the fight, but you also started the fight. Sir, I didn't even do nothing. He's got a back injury. Sir. You, you didn't fight. Sir, you can call that. You can call the head person up there. I okay, didn't. stop. I understand you live there. I understand he doesn't live there. That's not an issue. This is the deal. He doesn't want to press charges against you. What do you want to do? How in the world did I, sir? What do you want to do? I can't believe this, sir. I didn't start that, sir. I was at my own door. You understand by not going to the hospital that you, you could potentially go blind in your eyes? I know, man. I don't really care no more. I, I, mean, I ain't never Tony, seen no cops like that. Tony, you gotta wait a second. Hey, Tony, 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 sit down, Tony. I ain't never. If you don't get seen by a doctor, that's, that's, that's not good. You need to get that eye checked out. Here's your phone. Oh. Tony, look. I'm going to take a report. I'm going to write down your side of the story, his side of the story. Yeah. The detectives are going to investigate it. Man, no but you need to go to the hospital right now, man. No, You're not man. listening to those people. They're telling you if you don't get checked out, you can possibly go blind. Do you understand I'm, that? I sleep, man, will man. you go to the hospital? I will, but that's All right, really let's all, go. I'm laying, still going to take your side of the story. All right. The band, man, sleep, man. All right, and right I'll now. write that down. But you need to go to the hospital. You can't be walking back to your room and just stay in there. He's going to go. This is a deal, sir. Based on, the, uh, on talking to you, friends separately they both had the same story even though they don't know what the other one said so we're gonna believe you that he started it so we'll do a report it'll go up to the detectives and they'll contact you guys and let you know what's going on 132 in bush i've got him at gunpoint okay gunpoint 132 in bush covers code three 15 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10